Before starting this video, I do want to give a thank you to my patrons that support the channel. And if you would like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you in the link down below. So with that, let's get into today's video. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG. And in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on Rakdos Lord of Riots. This is a very classic commander and got downshifted to rare. For the longest time, this was actually the most popular Rakdos commander out there. However, it got outshined by Prosper Tonebound. Aside from that, this is still a very popular commander, third most popular Rakdos commander on EDH Rec. So if you haven't seen Rakdos before, I'm going to read it for you. So for double black and double red, we have a legendary creature demon. You can't cast a spell unless an opponent lost life this turn. He does have flying and trample. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So of course, to break down the commander, it is a little bit of a setback having that ability. You can't cast a spell unless an opponent lost life this turn, so ways you can get around that is by having cards that ping or if you have like a lightning bolt in your hand but of course this commander does give you the benefit if you give pain to your opponents the more he rewards you having the ability to reduce your spells based off of pain is absolutely busted there's so many different busted strategies you could go with this and that's why in this video it's not necessarily going to be a deck tech around Lactos lord of riots it's how you want to build around him i don't have a deck list down below because here I'm going to give you some suggestions. You want to have some pinkers in your decks and you, of course you do want to have big payoffs. Of course there's a lot of ways you could play this demon. You could play an artifact theme where you can make your creature spells cost zero. Same goes for Eldrazi. Since they're colorless spells, you could basically reduce them almost to zero just in case if they don't have colorless pips. Of course you can go into a sub theme with demons. Also you could even do dragons. Really anything that is big and splashy you might want to put in this deck. So in this guide I hope you do find something useful. As you go along in this process when you're building Rakdos Lord of Riots. So what's really cool about Rakdos is the fact that basically your burn spells act as rituals. So for example, if you use Tectonic Hazard, Lightning Bolts, or Rakdos Charm, the more damage you deal to your opponents, the more your spells are going to be reduced. Lightning Bolt essentially becomes a dark ritual when you do have Rakdos on the battlefield. Though I will say Rakdos Charm is pretty insane as far as rituals go because each creature deals one damage to its controller. So let's go into a hypothetical situation. Each opponent has five creatures on the battlefield and then you cast Rakdos Charm. If you do have Rakdos on the battlefield, essentially all your creature spells will be reduced by 15 mana. At that point, you could cast a lot of Eldrazi with that rate. Of course, in order to get Rakdos out, you want consistent pingers on the battlefield so that you can play at the right time. So for example, I want to mention Spear Spewer, Nettle Drone, and Stormfist Crusader. So what's great about these cards is the fact that you're making each opponent lose one life, if you do have Rakdos on the battlefield, you will essentially make your spells cost 3 less to cast. But if you don't have Rakdos on the battlefield, now you have that option to cast him. I would say out of all these, I do like Nettle Drone the most because whenever you cast a colorless spell, you untap Nettle Drone. You'll see in this deck you have a lot of colorless spells so that you can cast them for free with Rakdos and this is no exception. So if you tap Nettle Drone to deal 1 damage to each opponent, your colorless spells will cost 3 less to cast. Then when you cast a colorless spell, you can then untap Nettle Drone to deal 1 damage to each opponent again by tapping it. So that then your colorless spells will cost 6 less to cast. So again, there's a lot of these options. You don't want too much options because really you're just trying to reduce your spells. You're not trying to play Ping or Tribal. But I will say there is a decent amount of these effects on the battlefield where you'll deal 1 damage to each opponent. Why not take advantage of that? A way you can take advantage of that is by using using a card like O'Hare Ashanil. With all those ping-like effects, instead of dealing one damage, you're gonna deal four damage, and that's gonna be pretty insane depending on how much power you do put into this card. So of course, if you have this on the battlefield and another pinging option on the battlefield, you tap them to ping each opponent for one damage. Instead, you're gonna deal four damage to each opponent, making your spells cast 12 less to cast. So in essence, you pretty much could cast anything for free at that point. So seriously, I do think this is gonna be a slam dunk in the deck, no question about it. Also another pretty fun card I do want to mention is Blood for the Blood God. So for a double black and a red, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. Also you can discard your hand, then draw 8 cards. Blood for the Blood God deals 8 damage to each opponent, exile Blood for the Blood God. So to be quite honest, this is probably one of the more busted cards that you could play in this deck because if you deal 8 damage to each opponent, all your spells will cost 24 less to cast. And on top of that, you could basically refill your hand by having eight cards put into your hand. If somebody has a big board state on the battlefield and then you cast a damnation, for example, you could potentially have this just be reduced just to three mana. So obviously this is gonna be an easy include in any Rakdos deck to come. 
Um, and the last damage enabler I do want to discuss with you is Obnixilis the Adversary. I was kind of hesitant to talk about this mainly because it's not a creature, but it does have a good array of abilities. It does have that casualty ability to make another copy of itself. So say for example you had a 4-4 on the battlefield and then you sacrifice that to the casualty ability with Obnixilis. You'll have two Obnixiluses enter the battlefield, one with three loyalty and one with four loyalty that you sacrificed with. Then honestly, all you really need to do is just keep plus one Obnixilis all the time because each opponent will lose two life unless they discard a card. If you control a demon or devil, you gain two life. So with one Obnixilis on the battlefield, your opponents could potentially lose two life each, making your spells cost six less to cast with Rakdos on the battlefield. And if you do have a second Obnixilis on the battlefield, you could potentially reduce your spells by 12 if you do have Rakdos on the battlefield. So honestly, after mentioning that, I don't know why I was hesitant on mentioning this card because it's an excellent card on the battlefield just for three mana. And also it does make blockers and also you could potentially draw seven cards and lose seven life. Or you could do that to your opponents too to make them lose seven life so that your spells will cost seven less to cast. All right, so after reading it a little bit, I kind of convinced myself this is really good on the deck. So other than dealing damage to your opponents, and also putting big creatures on the battlefield, I do want to discuss with you another theme in this deck that could be quite dangerous because, of course, you don't control how much life your opponents are going to be losing each turn, so why not cast things at flash speed? So, for example, I did think of Winding Canyons and Emergence Zone. I do feel like Winding Canyons is a little better for this deck compared to Emergence Zone because, of course, you want to be casting your creature spells at flash speed and you want a consistent way of doing so. So, of course, you want to have flash speed in your deck because you never know when somebody's going to swing in for a lot of damage. Say for example somebody crater hoofed but they didn't have enough damage to destroy you. Then you realize oh you have a bunch of Eldrazi in your hand but you want to cast them at flash speed because it's not your turn and it's your opponent's turn that had the crater hoof. So in order to get ahead of your opponents you could easily crack an emergence zone or tap to pay into winding canyon so that you could cast all your Eldrazi for free because of course if your opponent that swung with a crater hoof dealt like 40 damage that turn and destroyed two of your opponents you could retaliate back and cast stuff at flash speed. Of course, the same effect can be said for Vidalcan Orrery. This has the ability you may cast spells as though they had flash. This is a consistent way of doing so instead of paying mana into some of those lands that I previously mentioned. But of course, with Vidalcan Orrery, you do have to pay the mana cost for it specifically. But if it's not your turn and somebody else was dealt three or more damage that turn, you could easily use cards that have flash speed like Skittering Cicada or Shimmer Mirror. If you are playing a lot of colorless spells or art effect spells this is going to be easy includes in the deck skittering cicada i feel like is personally a little better because you can cast colorless spells as though they had flash so there's a lot of colorless spells like eldrazi that you want to cast or even creatures that are artifacts plus it does have that second ability that could be game ending with whenever you cast a colorless spell until end of turn it gains trample and gets plus x plus x where x is the spell's mana value so if you keep doing that casting big spells the bigger this will become on the battlefield plus i will say with shimmer mirror it's more redundant see if anything else if you do have a lot of artifact themes in your deck this is more of an easy include but if you're playing more Eldrazi I don't feel like it's an include in my opinion but if you do want the best of both worlds Liberator Urza's Battlethopter is excellent in the deck mainly because you can cast colorless spells artifact spells as though they had flash so both of those abilities of the previous Skittering Cicada and also Shimmer Mirror are combined into this Liberator plus not only that this does have a course flash like the other creatures and it does have flying and the more you cast bigger and bigger spells the more 1-1 one -one counters you can put on liberator being a big threat in the air that you could swing in with so of course i do feel like this is going to be a very good card in the deck and a lot of those flash spells will be excellent too because of course again i do want to talk about the opportunity that will arise when your opponents are dealt damage not even on your own turn, you can cast your spells at flash speed with these options. So in this guide so far, I talked about damage enablers and I also talked about playing at flash speed because I feel like you could take advantage of the big splashy spells you can cast off of those things. And this next part is really up to you in my opinion. I feel like after talking about some of the other stuff I mentioned, I feel like those are more auto includes. This next part of the video I do want to discuss with you is the fact you can kind of play around whatever playstyle you want to go with. If you want to play the big Eldrazi theme by casting cards like Kozilek, Ulamog, or even It That Betrays, you might as well go ahead and go for that. They do have some insane cast triggers like Kozilek drawing you more cards to refill your hand so that you can cast more things. 
Illumog has that ability to destroy target permanents, so I feel like that's also another great option. And I feel like it that betrays is pretty scary to play against too. I will say those are more expensive options, at least in my opinion. Obviously, what's nice about Rakdos is, is you can kind of go in any kind of budget you want, even if you're going into an Eldrazi theme. You can cast big Eldrazi that are cheap or that are expensive as far as monetary wise goes. But of course, you can go into a colorless or an artifact theme outside of Eldrazi too. There's a lot of crazy artifacts that you can be playing. Of course, most notably, Blightsteel Colossus is a good game finisher. Of course, you're knocking out one opponent at a time, so that's more of a feels bad, at least in my opinion. But I will say you could also play some other fun artifact creatures like Platinum Angel, which you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So I feel like that's a fun way as far as keeping the game going if you want to keep the game going somehow. And also Platinum Imperion, it has that ability of your life total can't change. So just in case if you have a lot of burn spells that deal damage to everybody, your life total can't change, but everybody's uh, life total can change in that aspect. Of course, both of these cards can be very good in situational pieces. For example, if somebody's going in again for that Crater Hoof example, somebody's swinging in for like a billion damage, and you have a Urza's Battle Thopter on the battlefield, you could flash in Platinum Imperion, or of course you could flash in Platinum Angel so that you can't lose the game. Again, I know they're very situational pieces, but I did want to mention this mainly because Obviously, if you're playing a bunch of colorless creatures, your budget can kind of go all over the place. I know the big Eldrazi like Ulamog, Kozilek, and also Emrakul are very expensive monetary-wise. Also, I do feel like some of the artifact creatures like Blightstone Colossus can be expensive. Again, you could kind of use whatever color spells you want in order to win the game that way. But I will say, if you do want to go a little bit more degenerate in your deck, you could use a card like Cloudstone Curio. So it basically reads, whenever a non-artifact permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may return another permanent you control to, that shares its permanent type to its owner's hand. So depending on what's happening on the board state, Cloudstone Curio could be a game ender. I mean, unfortunately, the downside is uh, artifact can't trigger this. So if you do have an artifact creature enter the battlefield, you can't return another creature to your hand. But I will say you could easily win the game with Cloudstone Curio and Rakdos Lord of Riots on the battlefield. Say for example, you dealt about five damage to each opponent, making your spells cost 15 less to cast. And let's just say you had a Ulamog in your hand and another creature on the battlefield. When you cast Ulamog, it is free basically because everything costs 15 less due to Rakdos Lord of Riots. With that cast trigger of Ulamog, you could destroy a target permanent and then you return that other creature to your hand. And if it's a colorless creature you can just kind of go back and forth putting ulamog back to your hand casting ulamog putting the other creature back to your hand back and forth until you destroy all permanents your opponents control i know technically it's not winning the game but if your opponents don't have any permanents on the battlefield and you have a big giant rakdos on the battlefield with ulamog on the battlefield most likely they're going to be losing the game. Another way you could abuse Cloudstone Curio and win the game is using a card like Exocrine. So you could pay X into it and it will cost two less to cast. And when it does enter the battlefield, it'll deal X damage to each player and each other creature. So that will include yourself. So if you do plan on winning the game with Exocrine, you want to make sure you have more life than your opponents, which is kind of easy because of course you are in a burn strategy with Rakdos, making people lose all sorts of life. But again, there's a lot of ways you can win the game. Of course, if you use Cloudstone Curio. Those are just some examples that I wanted to bring to your attention. However, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Rakdos Lord of Riots. Again, this is a very fun and popular commander to play. And of course, with Ravnica Remastered reprinting this card, I wanted to make a guide around this commander because Again, it's a very fun uh, for you, but very not fun for your opponents. I will just say that. And I will give you a warning on Rakdos Lord of Riots. If you do plan on building him, it could be salt inducing to a lot of your opponents. For example, my cousin, he does have a Rakdos Lord of Riots deck and he did play against a random play group. He mentioned to me that he got Rakdos Lord of Riots out on turn two, I believe. And then later on, he dealt a bunch of damage to his opponents by a burn spell and by dealing damage with Rakdos Lord of Riots on turn three. So then after all that damage, he essentially casted Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger for free, also a Blightsteel Colossus for free, and I want to say a Kozlek -like Butcher of Truth refilling his hand. And at that point of the game, everybody basically was developing their board state. For example, somebody had like two lands and Arcane Signet on the battlefield, somebody had their commander on the battlefield with like two lands on the battlefield, and so... Obviously, you can see that where this is going. Rakdos, Lord of Rides, depending on what kind of speed you have in the deck, if you play a lot of fast mana, 
This could be very powerful, but very salt inducing depending on the play group you are playing with. So one thing I do recommend to you, if you do plan on building Rakdos Lord of Riots, is definitely talking to your play group if they're okay with you playing Rakdos Lord of Riots. Obviously, that's a very situational piece that doesn't happen a lot, but again, depending on how much fast mana you do have in the deck, you could very easily cast a lot of Eldrazi in turn 3 or turn 4. So aside from that warning, again, I do feel like Rakdos Lord of Riots is very powerful, but very susceptible to a lot of different removal because, of course, if they remove Rakdos Lord of Riots and you have a lot of big splashy cards in your hand and you're focusing on making sure that you can have those damage enablers to cast those free spells, well, you kind of out of luck and you're out of the game, so there's those situational pieces. But in the end, I feel like Rakdos is a very fun commander, at least in my opinion. Obviously, depending on how casual or how high powered you do want to play with them, it could be very fun in a specific kind of play group. But let me know down below in the comments, have you played Rakdos Lord of Riots? What is your experience playing with him or even playing against him? Do you feel like he's a pretty fair commander overall? Again, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.